Amen. To do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Amen. Thank God for being in a place I've never been before. Mount Emmanuel. But I thank God for your wonderful pastor. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise for you on tonight. Pastor Tony Boyce. Amen. And I was, I don't know, I was at the hotel and I was driving. I said, God, it's good to know when a pastor just does not feed his flock inspiration, but can also give them revelation. And so you better watch that in this day and now. There's a lot of people who just inspire people, but they have no revelation. And church has become a place where you just get inspired, but there's no revelation being poured out to the people. Amen. And so I thank God for a leader that can not only inspire the people of God, but can also give them what the heart of the Lord says. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for his lovely wife. We went to school together. Amen. She graduated with my sister. And, and as he said, we've never personally ever met. But the spirit knows the spirit. The Bible says you would know them that labor among you. Hallelujah. And sometimes we think that just means in your church. A lot of us gather together, but you don't labor and you don't know the people you, you go to church with. Oh, it's quiet here. I thought we was at revival. Amen. Been going to church for years and still don't like each other. Oh, it's going to get. Listen, I, I'm, I'm a real unorthodox preacher. But I'm talking about dealing with the issues of the church and the reason why the people in the world don't come to the church. Because the church is so messed up. Still mad with dead people. All right, we'll leave that alone. They gone. And you still holding on to something dead. Lord, have mercy. Let it go. I'm going to try to be over here so you can to come back. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for my mother. Amen. On tonight. Then some congregants that come and surprise me tonight and traveled up here and didn't tell me anything. Amen. Thank God for y'all coming on tonight. Let's go to Genesis 15 tonight and Exodus 3. Thank God for my wonderful husband uh, who I co-labor with in his absence, Pastor Rodney Goins, that definitely supports and pushes me to do what God has called me to do for such a time as this. So we're going to be in Genesis 3, uh, no, sorry, Genesis 15 and then Exodus 3. I know that your uh, theme this week has been the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So Genesis 15, verse 13 and 14. You can say amen when you have it. Amen. 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 You're on the way. So everybody got it? Amen. Genesis 15, verse 13 and 14 reads as follows. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge afterward. They shall come out with great possessions. Your version may say, King James said, come out with great substance. Amen. All right, then Exodus 3, verses 19 through 21. So we see there it says that uh, they will be afflicted and they will be burdened, so to speak, for 400 years. But then there's an afterwards. Everybody say afterwards. afterwards. It says that they will come out with great substance. They will come out with great possessions. All right, Exodus 3, verse 19 through 21. Exodus 3, verse 19 through 21, reads as follows. Amen. I got to find it again. I had it and it left me. Okay. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall be when you go 
that you shall not go empty handed. Yes, sir. Your version may say you will not go out empty. Yes, Amen. Glory to God. Look at somebody close to you and say, don't come out empty handed. Amen. 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 Don't come out empty handed. Amen. And I'm telling you, we're going someplace tonight because I was asking the Lord, you know, after you have had some losses, you got to start asking God, where you going to get a win? Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. I know in this audience there might be some Cowboy fans, might be some Steeler fans, might be some Redskin fans, might be some Patriots fans, and I don't care how good the team is, everybody can't win all the time. You got to experience a loss to really appreciate a win. Lord have mercy. And in this particular scripture, it was taught about how the Egyptians were afflicted first for 400 years. They were put in a state of bondage, some type of slavery, and they felt basically handicapped, couldn't do anything. Then the Lord said, listen, if they don't let you go, then I'm going to get involved. Sometimes we try to stop things from happening, and God is saying, no, a part of things happening is all hell got to break loose. And so what ends up happening is here it is, he says, now, if they don't let you go, then daddy's got to get involved. And see, when your daddy, I ain't talking about the one that you actually share DNA with. I'm talking about this daddy that never left or never missed a child support check. This one has been supporting all of us for over 2,000 years. And this daddy says, listen, if they don't let you go, I'm going to get involved. But when I get involved, you ain't coming out of this empty handed. They done took so much from you. At this point, I got to come back and pay you back for what you have endured. And so the reason why we need the joy of the Lord to be our strength is because, to be honest, the church has lost its strength. The church has lost its joy. If, 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 if coming to church was dependent upon the faces of some ushers, most people wouldn't come. When they took 
many churches now, they don't have an angel of the house. They have a monster of the house. You know what a monster is? Anything that got two heads. You can't say that you're, that you're solely planted in the house and you're trying to take it over. Okay. I said don't come out of it empty handed. The reason why people stay in bondage is because most of the time their mind is still there. That's why people who get out of prison and they go back and they repeat offenders is because they were left, they, they got out of an institution, but their mind still is institutionalized. And until this mind is renewed, you can be free all day. But unless your mind get renewed and unless your mind get free, you will still be in bondage. And so we're dealing with generations, and it's it's not it's not it's a coincidence. And then I thought it was great that the Lord would call this revival and end it on nine one one. I believe there's an emergency that requires urgency concerning the body of Christ. But yes, the world is sitting, and they were remembering the twin towers coming down. And I'm not making light of that, but there is another emergency happening in the spirit. And begin in the house of the Lord. So if his house is messed up, if his house is out of order, then what in the world are we worrying about out there? And I don't care how many times we feed the hungry. That's wonderful. I don't care how many times we, we uh, clothe the naked. That's wonderful and that's necessary. But guess what? Those things still does not give you a free ticket to get into heaven. There's a lot of good people but their souls are far from God. People even look at celebrities and they say, well, they're paying tithes. They like to say that. They say, well, you know, such and such, they're paying tithes and they're blessed. Let me tell you one thing. God would not override principle. If he said it, he has to honor it. So even if they don't acknowledge him as God, if they pay their 10%, the Bible says, will I not open up the windows of heaven, pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive? He's not going to override principle. Now the other part of that is, although they might be financially blessed, the thing is this, they may not have no peace. You can have all the worldly riches and still have no peace. There's a lot of people that are dealing with mental illness. And because the church is not, not discerning enough, they don't even know their brothers and sisters in Christ are about to blow their brains out when they leave revival. You can hear the word all day, but if you don't do it, it, it don't profit you nothing. He told us not to just be hearers of the word. He said, you got to be a doer of it. Because he said, then the doers would be justified. So he, he says that the 911 emergency that requires urgency. Listen, I know some of us uh, in that first scripture, it talks about they were uh, bonded and, and enslaved for 400 years. Part of promotion is going through persecution. A part of being promoted is you got to endure persecution. Amen. You're going to have to endure being talked about. You got to endure somebody lying on you. A part of being promoted is when you want to tell them all and God to say shut up. You want to respond in your flesh and God said no, they're not even worth it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. 
the Lord will fight your battles. A part of being promoted is still coming to church when it feels like you ain't even got a reason to believe anymore. That's all a part of being promoted. It's not siding with your flesh, but siding with your spirit. That says you got another reason to keep going. Even though you want to throw in the towel. Glory to God. Then we jump over to Exodus. And it says that when they got to that point, And said that God says, I will give favor. I will send favor. But he says, but when you come out of this, you're not coming out empty. And listen, I don't care what has happened in January. Up to this month, the ninth month of 2019. Don't you dare go of this revival or go out of 2019 empty handed. Some of you have been in the same situation now for years and for months and it seems like you keep coming out empty handed and God has sent me here to Greenfield, South Carolina to say listen this time don't you come out empty handed. have said. He still got the last say so. He still Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God that healeth thee. How you gonna know he's a healer unless you know you have, have endured sickness? He's still Jehovah Jireh. He's still the Lord God that will and shall provide. Well how do you know God is going to provide when things got to get kind of sticky and things got to get tight for you to understand how he can provide in a stuck place. Well You should have been there. <laughs> Isn't it funny? People that wouldn't support it still call you to see what happened. And the best response you can give them is you should have been there. Oh, well, how many people showed up? You should have been there. Well, what they preached about? Oh, go back and see the replay. Go ahead and support the audiovisual ministry. Oh, how much of them CDs? Oh, that's too much. <laughs> but you go into McDonald's. My husband said something so powerful the other night. He said, it's a shame that places like Lifeway and Family Christian Bookstore had to close because not enough of us have invested hmm. in our spiritual maturation. That thing stuck with me. Businesses close because they don't have enough people buying from it. So what happens when not enough of us are, are utilizing our funds to grow in our walk with God? And then we start looking around, where can I get a Bible? Ain't that something? Hmm. You have to go to the internet to go buy a Bible. Because mm -hmm. the stores are closing up. Because we don't see investing in our spiritual maturation as a necessity. And listen, I don't care how much technology, I don't care if y'all had all the TVs in here, nothing still replaces the Bible. Amen. You better still have one of these in your house. Amen. Because when your tablet don't work and when you forgot to charge it, you better know how to go back and get your Bible. Amen. And we are without excuse because you can get a Bible now from Dollar Tree. We are without excuse. Amen. If somebody says the Bible costs too much, here's a dollar. Go to Dollar Tree. That's right. <laughs> and that's a shame. We are not. We don't have the maturity to want God to that point. So don't come out of this revival without truly being revived. Don't come out of this revival without your prayer life being upgraded. 
The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, Amen. listen, you might have not voted for Trump, but you still need to pray for him. Yes, right. As long as we complain, it ain't nothing changing. The Bible says that the king's heart is in his hand and he can turn it whichever way he pleases. So enough of us, we got to stop complaining about 45 and get on our knees and pray for 45. Unless you won't go through another four years. Mm. And who's to, who's to say this is not a part of God's plan? Mm. <laughs> well, we don't like this. So why would God allow? He can allow anything. He, he can say, well, listen, you ain't praying no way, so this is a way to get some of y'all to pray. <laughs> Pray tonight. If you're not praying at home, you, it's gonna be hard for you 
to pray at church. Because for one, you're going to be like, what is this doing? We just praying. But let me tell you, the people uh, back in the day, they didn't have a lot of education, but they had a prayer life. And they wasn't saying, quoting a lot of scripture because they didn't know how to actually articulate it. But they knew how to call on the name of Jesus. It was something about his name. If they could just say, Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. It was something about just saying those stanzas by itself. It seemed like whatever it was, it had to back.